Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Holy hell, you're having a lot of bad luck, OP. Being robbed twice in one week? It's crazy. I'm glad you're getting yourself a new job. Wish you the best of luck in your adventures. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. I just got robbed. Again. Hey, Reddit. My store just got hit for the second time this week. This time I was alone. I was sitting behind the register, effing around on my phone when I looked up to see a hooded figure walking in. Damn it, this isn't happening again, is it? Maybe he's just got his hood on. He turned the corner and I saw the bandana on his face. F. Robert pulls out a revolver and tells me to empty the register and give him two cartons of cigarettes. I give him the cash and go over to the cigarettes. We're out of those, you want something else? Give me cool menthols. We only have one. Okay, give it to me. I gave him everything, and then everything turned around. Put your effing hands in the air. A childhood friend of mine who runs a security company just happened to be pulling in for some oil. I look up to see him with his gun drawn at the guy. The robber pushes his way out of the store where my friend and the robber start grappling. I step out to inform my friend that he's armed, turn around to go inside so I can talk to security over the PA. When I turned around, the robber's face was bloodied up. Apparently, my friend popped him in the eyebrow with the muzzle of his gun. I stepped back outside to relay more information to 911 dispatch, and my friend told me to grab his cuffs from his truck. Local PD arrived on scene, and a gung-ho officer almost put a taser on me. Luckily, she didn't have it turned on yet, or I'd probably be in the hospital typing this. The robber's gun was apparently a BB gun, but now he's looking at 10 to 25 with no priors. My other childhood friend who runs the company with my other friend showed up around this time and I got caught up with them. I put in my two weeks notice and am now looking at joining my friend's security firm. And our second story. Everyone interrupts every private party. I work in a popular franchise that lets you paint pottery and do a few other mediums as well. We also host those paint and drink parties. For all the years that I've been there, we only host adult private drinking parties after hours. I cannot stress that fact enough, yet we always get calls from angry customers saying they couldn't pick up their pottery pieces the night before because we had a party and sign saying they can't come in. Every time we tell them it was after hours, so even if a party hadn't been in the studio, they still couldn't have picked up their pieces. Anyway, the sign doesn't stop everyone. We have our hours posted on our door, and if there's a party, a sign next to it saying, Private party, do not knock or disturb. There's never been a single party where at least one customer doesn't bang on the door or force their way in. On to my most recent incident of this. I was hosting a party with a rather miserable woman. She was upset that we would not close the studio two hours early to accommodate her party. She made it very clear that she would definitely not tip if outside people tried to come in while she was there with her group. Naturally, about an hour and 20 minutes into this party, I see the telltale sign of someone about to bust in. A pregnant woman and two kids are at the door. I see her reading the sign with our hours. I see her look at the sign saying, private party. I see her do a double tank and then yank on the handle. I go flying over. Me equals me, pregnant lady equals PL me. Excuse me, ma'am. I can't let you in right now. There's a private party. PL. I'm here to pick up my pieces. Me. I'm sorry. You'll have to come back tomorrow when we're open. PL. You're open now. People are in there. Me. Actually, we closed over an hour ago. There's a sign right here asking people to not disturb this private party. PL. That's ridiculous. Let me in. I'm just picking something up. It'll only take you a second. Me. I can't let you in. This is a private party. We're not allowed to serve customers when the studio's not open. PL. This is insane. I drove 40 minutes to get here to pick up these pieces. You have to let me in. Here's where I explain, probably for the 10,000th time in my job here, to the 10,000th customer to have done this, that we are not open. Our hours are posted online and she can check those for future reference. If a party was not currently in the studio and she still drove all the way out here without checking our hours, she would have walked up on a closed, dark store and still couldn't have got her pieces. P.L. This is an outrage. I'll be calling tomorrow to speak with someone about what a terrible employee you are. After that, I'm going to call the Better Business Bureau. 
At this time, my party person is making it clear that I've spent too much time at the door and she needs attention. I can feel this tip slipping away, and I can already tell this party will stay past their designated time and trash the place. Me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I have to go now. PL pulls on the door as I'm shutting it. No, you have to let me in. I drove 40 minutes. Me. Ma'am, I'm the only person here, and I'm supposed to be helping this party. I need you to leave. I finally shut and locked the door. I would have kept it locked, but people from the party kept stepping outside to smoke. Anyway, the two kids took a little down, but ultimately don't seem to care. PL, on the other hand, bangs on the door off and on for 10 minutes. Finally, I look back up and she flips me off before walking into the night. And our next story. After the accident, they asked me not to call the police. So I, female 36, was on my way home from work yesterday. I drive a RAV SUV, and the road I was on, a four-lane one, two one way and two the other, just off the interstate. I'd pulled into the left lane, after which a couple of miles becomes a left turn lane, and in the right lane next to me was a smaller car. I didn't think anything of it when they sped up, but when they cut across my lane and were trying to U-turn, which, because of where we were at the time, was not only illegal but really dangerous, and I slammed my brakes but unfortunately couldn't stop in time. I ended up slamming into the side of the other driver's car. As we're both stopped in the middle of the road, I got out of my car and went to check on the other driver and their passenger. They were teenagers, a boy and girl. I asked if they were okay, and thankfully no one was hurt. They got out of their car and looked at the damage on their car and mine, and I was already calling 911. Luckily, there was an off-duty EMT from the local fire department behind us, so he turned the lights on in his truck and pulled up to check on us. He'd seen the whole thing. The kids begged me not to get the police involved because the boy that was driving would lose his license and offered to pay me off so they could leave. I was shook and trying to stay as calm as I could. This is where I might be the a-hole. When they were begging me not to call the police, I sternly told them no and that the accident needed to be reported and that I needed the report for my insurance company. The kids started freaking out and the girl called her father and told them a Karen was calling the cops on them. The boy was just sitting in his car and barely said a word. When the state trooper showed up, he gathered our licenses and registration and asked what happened. The EMT and I explained that the kids had cut in front of me and I told how they'd tried to pay me off so they could go and the kids admitted to trying to pull a U-turn because they got off on the wrong exit. The cop chewed them out for reckless driving and pulling an illegal U-turn and went to his car to run the licenses. The father of the girl shows up not long after and doesn't say a word to me, which was fine by me, but stares daggers at me while taking a picture of the front of my car. After the trooper was done, he goes over to the kids and gives them a copy of the accident report and tickets the driver, then gives me a copy of the report. Thankfully, they were insured, so I could have my insurance company deal with that. The damage to my car wasn't as bad as theirs. It was drivable, but still busted up the right side enough to still need repair. Plus, as I was getting closer to home, I started smelling something burning, so I had to stop and have it towed to the dealership's repair garage. My car isn't even six months old. Update. Just finished up with getting a repair estimate from my dealership's body shop. I'm looking at around a $3,000 repair job. I spoke with my insurance company, and they helped me file a claim with the kids' insurance company. Just waiting on their company to give me a call back because they need to send one of their adjusters out to look at my car as well before we can move forward with this. And our last story. Neighbor built driveway and road on my property, bulldozed a road across, and cut down trees. I live in Missouri. I inherited a property with two lots and house sitting between the two. This property is vacant and was fully wooded, went over to mow grass and pick up leaves yesterday and noticed a lot more light coming from behind the property, walked around and saw a road had been bulldozed across it and all the trees in a fenced-in yard had been dropped, just cut down and left there. The new neighbor built a driveway across his property into mine by bulldozing land and put up a retaining wall of concrete blocks, of which 75 feet is on my land according to the survey pins. In addition from his driveway, he bulldozed a road across both lots to other neighbor's yard. There was a solar streetlight mounted on a pole on my lot, a picnic table, a stack of ladders locked up, and his two vehicles are sitting on my property. Again, according to pins placed by his survey company when he bought the house, 
We removed all his property except for vehicles, waiting for survey company to establish boundary, then we'll tow. We placed no trespassing signs on fence and painted purple on fence and stumps and yard the color for no trespassing in Missouri. I'm hiring a surveyor to place new boundary pins and looking for a lawyer versed in real property law and tree law. Just frustrated with this change of events and want this done. Update. I took all the pictures I could and bring the case to a real estate attorney. I'm solidly outside of small claims court territory, $5,000 maximum. Cease and desist letter going out this week and police after new survey done. Update 2. The new survey showed that he went far into my territory and got a huge fine, so now he has to restore my property to the way it was before he interfered. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.